Yo, you listening? Are you tired of the same clout chasing gatekeepers, the same sports media, podcasts, and radio with recycled takes and no context? That's where a touchdown's tangents comes in. See, we're different. We give you culturally concise commentary, context for the culture, in depth NFL analysis. So get ready and prepare yourself for the tangents. Listen in. Gotta turn that part of the board up, fool. What's up, good people? Two hours late, 20 wings deep. It's touchdowns and tangents. 25. TDs underscore tangents. Twitter's Instagram. I'm Pete D. Camarillo. He's Kenneth Frank James Berry. Kenneth Frank James Ignatius Bartholomew Berry. Not fucking around with that. And we're your Thursday night spot for NFL takes, topical tangents, content for the culture. And even if some of those L.A. football teams, quote, unquote, haven't heard of us, We've been about this. Look, our archives never lie. We've been saying that since day one, so. Any? That's when you're supposed to say you're. Nah, it was just more like, you know what? Fine. You've never heard of us. But. It's out there and people. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Just. We just keep getting. We just been credentialed for shit for like, I don't know what, the better part of eight years. So we just we just keep getting credentialed, show up, do great work, put out a bunch of interviews. And because like we don't do what everybody else does, seemingly you just don't pay attention. But that's kind of your fault. TikToking on the sideline. That should have been the title. Or my favorite part is when they like use an answer to a question you asked but cut out your question repeatedly. Mm-hmm. But then when they put post their shit, they post their whole questions. Seems kind of weird to me. Seems kind of like plagiarism. I mean, not really. It's a press conference. That's the whole mm. point. That's literally the whole point of a press conference. But if you're constantly using other people's answers as part of your story and not like... Kenny, that's literally yeah. what a press conference is. Feels lazy sometimes. I'm saying... A if press you... conference is no, literally I, I know what a press transcribed and distributed to media... Across all channels for them to use. Okay. That's literally the purpose of the But I'm talking about conference. the people who didn't go to the press conference and still use that shit as if they were firsthand. If you're talking right about, there. like, when you're on the when like on the sideline, like, after the game or whatever, or you catch someone in the tunnel and you're asking them a specific question and then someone just hits record and then uses that as, the, as their source of information, then, yeah, that's borderline fringe plagiarism that's kind of what if i'm talking not, about if not plagiarism at least like lazy and highly unethical play hayden that's kind of what i'm talking about that other shit i don't but really a care press about. conference is fair game because not because they cause send you the always, notes afterwards not always you don't always get a question in too you send, they send you the notes afterwards so not uh, everybody always gets a question in, so sometimes I, yeah. you have to pull from what you can pull from like and sometimes People only have a certain amount of time when we take a certain amount of questions and you just got to kind of cipher through and figure out what the fuck you're going to do about it. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, should we say the name of the restaurant? Applebee's. Shout out to Applebee's. We won't say where it is because we're not going to blow up the spot. But all you can eat. Well, my brother already kind of blew up the spot. But yeah. No, he blew up well, I paid my fare. He, he, he only blew up. He had to. He learned a young man's lesson. Any time the bill is a hundred ninety dollars or above, you tip at least twenty dollars. Hundred, you just go twenty five. Especially if they like we're waiting on you all night. But I'm, hey, you live and you learn. All right, man. Other stuff we got to talk about. A uh, bit of a somber note, but uh, shout out to Arkansas, great. Former Seahawks, Ravens running back, Alex Collins, died at the age of 28. Was just on the Seahawks roster, I believe, last year in the camp. Motorcycle accident. Motorcycle accident. So, definitely sad to hear. Y'all be safe out there. 
Physical runner, for sure. Like, wasn't a burner, but had... A just, he had quick feet. acceleration. I'd say he was, like, a slightly... I'm not going to say he was better than Eddie Lacy, but he was, like, a more chiseled, more in shape. He had more burst than Eddie Lacy. I'll well, I mean, I think... I felt like he came to the league when Eddie Lacy went to the Seahawks. I think it was a little bit after. I feel like that might have been the same time. Eddie Lacy's not that old, bro. Feels like it, though. I it's know. It feels part. like... Well, because Aaron Jones has been good for so long, but... Uh, let's see. What, what draft class was Eddie Lacy? 2013. Damn. About 10 years. Yep, and he was out the league 2017 for the Hawks. And I believe Alex Collins joined 2015, 2016. So, yeah. Slight overlap. Beat, beat, him, beat, out, beat him out for the job. All right, moving on. Another kind of, I don't know. You would say somber, but definitely a weird story to start the day. But it's been the talk of the week, in case you missed it. The Blind Side, yeah, that movie from, like, over 10 years ago. Uh, Basically, the star person it was based off of, Michael O'Hur, former tackle of the Ravens and Panthers. And I think that's it? Is someone? Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Pretty much said that he was tricked into a cons- conservatorship. And got ripped off by the Tui family. Claims the Tui family made like over seven hundred thousand dollars off that movie. All of the kids that the movie that the all the kids who had characters based off of them basically got more money than O'Hur did. And also Michael Orr. And the Tui family is basically saying that they're innocent, saying that they're heartbroken by the allegations. And they called uh, it a cash grab. Of the cash grab they lied to him and said he was adopted. He's never actually. He found out this week he was not their adopted son ever. So I actually read. So I actually read more about that, and I don't know if that's true either because he's on record saying that they're his conservatorship, like in 2012. That meant back then. He probably didn't know what that meant, but he understood that caretaker they weren't his adopted parents. That they were his conservator, and it was like being. On what year did he come out of college? He's got to be what, like 2012, 2013? So, I mean, it's easy to get over on a 22 year old, a 15 year old, a 16 year old, 17, 17, 18. It's easy to get over on an 18 year old, especially when you're talking about legal contracts. And did he have separate legal counsel? Damn, he's already almost 40. He has a beautiful family too, by the way. He was with the Titans. Ugh, let's not let's not remember that part of history. Um, he was like the twenty third overall pick. Definitely don't remember the year. Two thousand and nine. I was a senior in high school, so he was. One. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess basically that whole kind of situation took place when he was like 17, 16, 17. Yeah, so, I mean, it's easy to get over on a kid. That's really fucked up, and they're scumbags for that. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean... The way people on Twitter and from Memphis have came out and said, yeah, the Tui's have always been racist pieces of shit. They took a picture with some black kids, um, even though the kids had money to pay for their food, and they pawned it off as like, oh, we're helping these two, you know, aggrieved, starving black children. And they're like, no, you weren't. We had enough money to pay for our food, and you offered to pay for it. And then you took a weird picture with us. Like, they, they've been on some racist bullshit. And yeah. th- thousands of people on Twitter are yeah, going to lie but, but yeah. who are from Memphis. Yeah, but that journalists, doesn't really even matter. Yeah, but I'm saying it does matter because it speaks it to really, our character. It really doesn't Journalists matter. have come out and said, yeah. That doesn't really matter. 
that's all just hearsay piling on bullshit. What Not I'm really saying, hearsay. I what mean, I'm saying is that doesn't matter. You just, that doesn't matter. That, if I saw that you shoot somebody, and you shoot somebody ten years from now, like yeah, he shot somebody back in the day. Kenny, you just compared shooting someone to being racist. Not the same thing. Okay, you're totally, you're totally missing. No, the point. you did that. You did that. Whether don't, it's don't racism, blame me. whether it's racism you did that. or shooting, you did that. it's two actions that show a pattern. So if you have a pattern of being racist or a pattern of shooting people, and a bunch of people come out and say, "Yeah, he was racist as fuck back then," or "Yeah, he was gun toting back then," Kenny, you're conflating a lot of things and like no, I'm not. tying a lot of things together that aren't necessarily there. I'm saying people have this, have whole stories and facts is, about you being what racist. What I'm saying is, Kenny, uh, Kenny. You're talking about shit that doesn't matter. You're talking about the court of public opinion. You're talking about Twitter that doesn't even fucking exist. Like, what you're talking the about, people, Kenny, what you're talking about the journalists really doesn't fucking matter, human bro. Human beings are like, nah, I know them. Listen to me, bro. There's whole... Listen okay, to me. Bro. All listen, these people are lying. Listen, listen. What you're talking about is bullshit, bro. What you're talking about is literally, like, bullshit. Like, you're talking about hearsay bullshit on a platform that doesn't even exist. Like you're you're talking about bullshit times bullshit times bullshit. What I'm talking about bullshit What I'm talking about is actual like legality <laughs> and shit. What I'm saying is sure, they're probably not the best people. Sure, they may or may not have taken advantage of this person. Mm. But the thing is, you can't say like 20 years later when you're already on wax saying you know they're conservative they're your conservator that you didn't know that you were conservators one two that you, you signed you signed the papers at 17 18 years old which means one they had the burden of proof to substantiate that you needed a conservator you needed someone to look out for you because you were unable to look out for yourself. Or you thought you did, so you got talked in the Whatever, the paperwork. whatever. Either way, which that in itself proves the point. It's like, yeah, no, if someone... Just, you can get someone, over on a 17-year-old kid. Exactly. So if someone can talk you into signing paperwork, then you probably need someone to read over your paperwork. Who had over like, the family attorney? Like, yeah, that's another but thing. But do you see what I'm saying? Most that That's not... You need a conservatorship. That's you're 17 sure. and you don't know you're about to sure, get fucked Kenny. by the legal system. Sure, Kenny. Sure. That's like but getting... he signed it when he was 18. He didn't sign it when he was 17. He signed the papers when he was 18. Okay. What outside counsel did he have? Well, that's on him. He's an 18-year-old man. But you can die for the country, you can fuck prostitutes, you can go to the gambling, you, you can do whatever the fuck you drink. want. That's the only thing, those are the only two things you can't do between 18 and 21. But I mean, the we, the point that I'm making though, Kenny, is like, yeah, I get it. The two is not on the up and up. They probably did some shit. They probably had bad character or whatever. But I'm also saying like Michael or her is not innocent in this either. Like he's not scot free off of this either because even what? Pretty sure he didn't. Even what? Like even like bullet. two years ago, he was on the record talking about this very situation, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't really care." Like, I moved on with my life. I have family. I have blah, blah, blah. And, like, a year later, you're like, oh, no. Like, what happened to me was not right. What if you found out, oh, y'all scammed extra money off me? Ain't that a bitch? I'd be mad, too. I'd want some get back, too. Here's the thing that you're missing, If you scammed bread off me. Kenny. And all these kids got it. Kenny, how many times do we talk about rappers' first deals? That This is not. A hip hop situation. Yeah, it's it's this not is that not far a three sixty deal. It's, it's yeah, all conservatorship. No, this is worse than a three sixty deal. It's a conservatorship, dumbass. It's um, literally a three sixty deal. It's a fucking seven twenty deal. 720. It's a seven twenty deal. Hey, you know what's worse? Ask Britney. You know, the she's already in exactly. Divorce. You know what's worse exactly. than a seven twenty or three sixty? Exactly. Bro. Student loan debt. Student student loan debt is a fucking uh fourteen forty. That's a gangbang. That's a forceful gangbang. That's a revenge porn gangbang. But yeah, so I mean, even for him, like, still not paying my student. Like I said, I don't know the whole situation. I'm not there. I don't know them. But just the optics of it. Imagine being a 37 year old man, having three kids or however many kids he has, 
and going to them and being like, yeah, I've been taking advantage of for 20 years. And imagine... Because you didn't read and imagine, and imagine those kids are now 12, 13, 14. And imagine those oh, they're kids... they're grown now. Whatever, however old they are. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying the is... The Tuohys are grown kids. No, I'm talking about his kids. <laughs> oh, okay, well, yeah. Now, imagine for half of however long those kids' lives are, they're like, oh, well, that's fucking... Auntie Uncle Michael and Auntie whatever, like, or yeah. whatever, like. Yeah, yeah we don't fuck with them And you're no like, more. yeah, they were taking advantage of me for 20 years. Like, bro. Yeah. No, no you can no, say that. Nothing, you can say. nothing is going to take that back. Nothing is going to make that better. Like. Now, my money <laughs> makes me feel better. Like, nah. My money makes me feel better. You fuck but me then you should have read the paper, bro. You should have read the paper. <laughs> but and you're the first person to come on here and say, yeah, his biggest gripe was that they made him look stupid and remedial they made him look when, stupid he wasn't, when he wasn't remedial or stupid. Well, That's you should have cla- read the fucking paperwork because no, clearly he, had he no was control capable over of it. He had no control over that. Clearly thing. he was capable of it. Yes, yeah, he did. He had he no didn't control over the casting it. for the movie. Okay, but he still signed the paperwork and gave up his control and power. Like... Okay, that's people can you can get that finesse out of you either way. That's my issue. But the issue is like a lot of movies where there's a white savior, the black person is stupid and helpless and just like a slave. And yeah, black people don't like that shit. I didn't. I hated Again, the Blind bro. Side. I thought that shit was trash. Again, you're talking uh, about. And some you forgot shit. the Hugh Freeze element since you want to talk about everything else. Let's talk about how Hugh Again, Freeze made money off that situation. You're talking about some shit that doesn't even got matter, a whole bro. no, but he got he got money. You gonna Behind say that. Sandra Bullock didn't win her Oscar? Cause Sandra even Bullock if she ain't got shit back. to do with the two. It's all she did was play a character. So I'm talking about Hugh Freeze, who got money from Ed Ogeron, but what was I'm a high saying, school coach. I'm saying you're saying everybody that, got bread off that situation except him. You're saying that the movie sucks or whatever. What or I'm some saying gross is ass slave that play. shit doesn't even matter. Sandra Bullock got an Oscar for that. That shit's in the Academy. It's cemented. It doesn't matter. Who gives a fuck? Take it away. I don't care about the movie. I didn't like the movie when it came well, out. What I'm telling you is. It's a little too late for all this shit. It doesn't matter. It's just a, a fucking song? dog days of fucking okay. NFL I just stop making song preseason. References. And people ain't got nothing to talk about, so they're going to talk about this 20-year-old shit because everyone wants the NBA to come back. That's but guess it. what? This ain't Nobody the cares NBA, about the NBA, bro. bro. Nobody cares about the NBA. What, what I'm saying talking? is this is, some, this is some NBA fucking drama. This is some fucking bullshit that doesn't matter that... E- and it doesn't matter so much that people can just have their opinions on it and talk about it because really, like you are right now, nothing's gonna happen. Because I was not gonna mention this. Uh, quick question: Did you watch the NBA Hall of Fame ceremony? Definitely not. You're I not watched a, the you're clips. You're not a real fan. I watched the clips. You're not a real fan. I watched the clips. I don't. It's alive. How dare you? How the fuck? I don't watch Disgrace. anything live, Kenny. I only thing I watch live is football games. That's impossible. And I only watch NFL. You te- you watch, I've and I don't even watch- really watch Sunday night. I only watch fucking. You watch what, the USC UCLA game live. Did I though? Yes, you did. You were in the room. Did I, I on, though? While I was on, did I really watch it? it? Was playing in two I rooms. was already blacked out at that point. It doesn't fucking matter. You were actively. You're like, it. dang. You're looking back like, dang. Pete really wasn't not watching it, and he was in the room and just not watching it. You were in the room and it was on, so that counts. No. Yes, it does. Just like a conservatorship. See, that's why, I like... You were there. But, but see, that's why it I get happened. upset. This is why this this upsets me. It's because everybody has an opinion, but motherfuckers don't even know the difference between adoption, conservatorship, guardianship. And guess who does? Oh, oh, oh I don't know. I do. And, it, and, probably, it's, and it's like... And it's like, like share that information with finish. the audience. And let me finish. And it's something that I come across every single fucking day. Whether it's at the school, whether it's at the DMV, whether it's at the doctor, whether it's with the police, whether it's anywhere. People don't know fucking paperwork. You are period. Triggered. You are triggered. Period. People don't know paperwork, period. First of all. That's true. Second of all, when they see paperwork, they wouldn't even know what it looks like. Because they've never seen it before. It's usually how paperwork works. Exactly. And they're like, oh. And you're like, no, this is the right documentation. And they're like, oh, I guess it is. And it's like, well, why are you challenging me? Well, because I've never seen this before. And I don't have anything to the contrary. So then you should just take it for what it is? Like, or should I talk to a lawyer? <laughs> like, what, should what I do talk you want to a lawyer to who's going to bill me? Uh, what, do you, what do you want me to do? And then tell me to And like, furthermore, 
Michael Orr has already lived his career arc. So he has already had money. He could have already dealt with this situation. Why are you dealing with this situation? Who knows? Damn near seven, ten years. I saw it ten years since you were relevant in the league. I mean, what if seven just, years since you were in the league? Period. What if he just find out about the money though? What if he just find out the numbers, well? like yes. the actual numbers, like hard numbers? You're like, what the fuck? These worthless ass kids didn't do shit. I actually played in the NFL, was all American and all academic, and these little punk ass kids getting money off my career. Sure, these family eating off sure. my name. Sure, I, anybody. And there were other sure. people already in his life who were helping him. Sure, but he's already been on record talking about how he doesn't care. He's moved on. He just wants to put right. that behind. When money him, comes blah, in, blah, blah, people blah. start caring. Well, if you find out, you should cold. be smart enough to keep your mouth shut. When I've been in, when I've been in whatever situations I've been in, you know what every lawyer's always told me: shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, period. Um, whether it's media, whether it's cops, whether it's the fucking judge, whether it's an investigator, I, I can't a- help you if you fucking open your mouth. Like we said, and I double can't help you if you open your mouth and say something I don't statements. know about that I don't know about. Make definitive statements. So. It's like oh, we no, talking man. About- I hope he figures it out, but yeah, I'm not I'm not just gonna fucking feel sorry for him just because he's playing the victim card now twenty years later. I mean, I look at it the same way we were talking about, you know, high high school kids picking the wrong colleges and concert transferring earlier. It's like you gotta go where you're gonna play and do what's best for you and not join shit just because it seems right or because it feels right or because you think you're gonna be family. Like, sometimes people get sold a bill of goods, and you can't really undo that after all these years. But, yeah, the racial slave narrative when white people are saviors of black people in movies is, like, firmly established in Hollywood lore. Just look at Black Panther. We can really talk about how, like, you killed your cousin Killmonger, but Elliot Ross and... The U.S. government is way fucking worse. Like a million times. They created your cousin. After your father murdered his father and left him to die. So, I mean, like, when we when you really break it down, like, in all the movies where there's a black person, there just has to be a white savior there. And if you want to break it down to even religion. Who's the white savior in Black Panther? Elliot Ross in the first movie. And arguably the second one. The dude who got shot, he she jumped in front of a bullet for a Koye or whoever. And then he got shot. They put the beads in his back, saved him. And then they said, okay, we're planning a coup. You're going to shoot down all these ships that Killmonger has where he's going to send weapons to the war dog. Did you even watch Black Panther, the first yeah, one? Yeah, I don't remember that part at all. That's literally the whole fucking premise of the movie. You, yeah, I don't remember you that suck part at, at Marvel all. movies, bro. I don't want to ever hear you talk about uh, Marvel movies. Uh, I don't remember that part at all. You didn't watch it. You probably fell asleep. But you said, TMT was a masterpiece. Shut actually, the fuck up. I actually watched it like four times. I actually saw, I've actually seen the first Black Panther like probably more than any other movie. Yeah, I know you have. And you like just, literally you can't more tell me anything than any about other it. movie. Like, you just tune Other out maybe, when you watch Marvel movies. Honestly, probably Endgame, I've probably seen, like, two times less than Black Panther. And Thor 2. You saw the worst I've Thor I've never movie. seen so. I've only seen Thor 2 once. You saw the worst Thor Love movie. and Thunder? Uh, it's, no, the third, it's the third one. Yeah, so I've seen the third one, like, one and a half times. Jesus Christ, man. I never saw the second one. That's the one with, like, when he fights, like, Loki and shit. Right? You only saw Iron Man 3, too. Isn't that right? Yeah, because that was the Avenger one. You saw the worst Iron Man 3. That was the Avenger one. You didn't see the first two Iron Man. You haven't seen the and original I saw Iron the third Cap- Captain America in like half a Winter Soldier. <sighs> you suck. Winter Soldier should have sucked. No, it did. <sighs> Look me in the eye and tell me Winter Soldier was good. It didn't suck. It was necessary filler. <laughs> it it was necessary suck. filler. That's what you're necessary. That's what necessary that's filler lead. doesn't suck. That's your lead. Of, uh, that's your lead of your review. It didn't suck. It was necessary. It was necessary. It, was it. <laughs> it had to tell a story. Blake Griffin didn't suck. He had to exist for fucking all these other dudes who were hyper athletic to come after him, right? I guess. Somebody has to pay the price. I've never heard anybody say Blake Griffin sucks. No, but I'm saying, like, his career could have been so much better. And, like, had he. So you're been- saying Blake Griffin is a winter soldier? Is that what you're saying? 
Probably. I mean, he's probably listening to Chris Paul too much. Damn, that's fucked up. Hey, you're a Clipper guy. Nah, he yeah. probably listened to DeAndre too much. Who, no, but who the fuck listens to DeAndre? DeAndre can't shoot. Coors Light. Really? I was about to say you something. You got the reference, I was about though. to say something. You got the reference, I was about reference, to say though. something. You got oh, the reference, though. I was about to... Change the subject. I was about to fucking say something. You got the reference. I did, and I was about to say something. <laughs> I had to catch myself. There's too many inside jokes on this pod, man. Let's do more. More inside jokes? Did you get it? Did you get it? Yes, I did. Stop. <laughs> Stop, bro. Somebody I'm him, bro. I'm, somebody I'm, gonna come after you. I'm him of passive aggression on the airway. Somebody gonna pop you in public, and I'm gonna just have to play it off. Like, I don't know why it happened. Like... They finally came back to get their vengeance. It's like, All if something right. happens to me, the Pac-12 did it. Moving on. To the east side? On the other, deluxe apartment? Other, uh, after a Clippers game? Other news that happened this week. Uh, be quiet. Nick Manning is returning to U10 as a communications professor. What the fuck? How is this? I don't premium? know why that's on the leading How is this premium news? No idea. Like, Ronald Darby. Talk got- to your producer. My phone's about to die, so I can't. It's not her fault, though. Yeah, that's random. It, it's because she's like, SEC like, biased. Like, literally, that could have been in any other segment but this segment. I was like, what the like, fuck? Like, you could have put it in fair hey, Pete, sometimes You could have put it in touchdown or turnover. You could have put it in take or tangent. Pete, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you could even put it in college football. <laughs> hey, Pete, you know how sometimes I purposely go off script when I'm reading the rundown? Yeah. It's because of moments like this. Some shit, you just don't read when you see it, and you just wait to read it. I do usually do that, but I don't know. I just saw Peyton Manning. And... It's, it's okay. You're still bloated off the wings. College football. You just looked at me and I just told you my phone's about to die. I don't have the fucking run down in front of me. But cool story. Cool beans. Stanford to Cal ACC membership votes fail by one vote. Did you say Kale? I said Cal and Stanford. I swear I thought you said Kale. It's not Dragon Ball Z. And I know you don't eat Kale. Yeah, I'm not surprised it failed. It was horrible. Bro, the only option, I'm going to keep saying this. Uh, the Mountain West has to just strong arm the Pac-12 into being a member, and the Pac-12 has to get off their fucking high horse and realize they're dying in the middle of the road with both their legs cut off, um, and they need somebody to, like... Like, they're Lieutenant Dan, and the Mountain West is Forrest Gump. You guys just need to be a team together for a while. Like, give them... While you still have your automatic qualifier status, anoint it to the Mountain West... Oregon State and um, Washington State can be in one division and Stanford and Cal can be in another. Boise State can be in the same conference as Stanford and Cal. That way, Boise State and Oregon are playing each other every year because that's a cancel-out game. Uh, You put Air Force against Oregon State. Like, you could balance out that conference. I mean, they don't have to go back to divisions, but you can just add those four teams, and you can figure it out. It's not like, that fucking I like, hard. I like the divisions. So. Oh, they got rid of them. All I know is I'm just tired of hearing this bullshit like, about how, oh, the money can't work. It doesn't matter about the money, dude. It matters about if people are going to watch your fucking product and give you money for it. You want to know why the SEC can get a fuck ton of money? Because there's enough teams across enough sports that people will watch. Guess what? How many of you have watched Big Sky Football? Exactly. You know what? I could have stopped. I could have just been quiet for another 10 seconds. Some of you probably don't even know what the fuck the Big Sky Conference is or who's in it. See how? See that? So for all you listening at home, I want you to count the seconds because some of you are going to be like, I really don't know what the hell he's talking about right now. Yeah, the Big Sky involves like Sacramento State, a lot of FCS schools, Montana, uh, Montana State. Bottom line is, these four schools are like the most mid of mid of mid in football. If it was women's basketball, I'd be like, you know what? These are elite programs. You got a chance here, Stanford at least. Nobody is like, I'm going to pay multi-millions of dollars. If I'm fucking Apple, I'm not giving you $30 million for Stanford, Cal, 
uh, Wazoo and Oregon State? Are you on drugs? Are you high and stupid? But at least with the Mountain West, they can be like, look, we can forge a conference. You can go back to divisions or everybody can play each other. There's a winner. But the Mountain West needs those out of anybody. They need those four teams, and the Pac-12 needs to not be stupid and just go get the bum-ass AAC conference. Bro, I'm telling you, I'll quit covering college sports if that shit happens. I will I will just never go to another Pac-12 anything if they fucking combine with whoever is left in the American Alliance Conference. Who's in the American Alliance Conference? Can you tell me? Is it Rice? So right now... I'm, Navy. So right now I'm reading the history of the Mountain West Conference, and it's fucking crazy because like all GCU these teams have and just Utah been always there? tied together. No, but you're talking about the American Conference, which wasn't that the Big East before? Pretty much, it was a combination of the Big East USA, and Conference USA. Right, and Conference USA was supposed to merge with the Mountain West like three times. And it they actually Boise State they agreed to it, and then they they disengaged. The Boise State was about, supposed to be in the Big East. Yeah, and, and then um, like, NCAA talked them out of it. Like that's a bad idea, guys. Because you'll lose a bunch of money. The Mountain West could really just take over the Pac-12's trap and be even better. Like, the Mountain West could do what Future did when he took over T-Pain's trap and just became much bigger than him. And they're, and T-Pain's on the record saying, like, Future pretty much took over my shit, which he did. It's facts. It's historical. Nah. I think you realize how big T-Pain was. T Pain just, just got laid. Bro, you bartender? I've heard you say, I've been out in public where you sang bartender. Kenny, I was alive during T Pain. Well, I'm not saying that future, that future, that T Pain wasn't as big as future. What I'm saying is, one, their sounds are totally different. Two, what I'm saying, I'm sorry, the most popular. Two, not future's been in the game just as long Dungeon as T-Pain. Family, yeah, I know. So, how two are you going to take their chain? Is T Pain even from Atlanta? He's from Florida, if I'm not mistaken. So and he got he got hot in Atlanta. So what are we talking about? He got hot in Florida and he got hot. Talking in about more bullshit, bro. And he can actually sing, and he's more talented. You gotta stop listening to podcasts, even though we're on podcasts, because it's no. just filling your. You head realize T Pain actually can sing with bullshit. no auto tune? Yeah, I know that. He's I incredibly fucking Alcabella. talented. Okay, then. So don't be fucking playing with T Pain's name, then. What's wrong with you? I've been out in public with you at bars while that song, while T Pain's music is playing, and you're out there fucking singing, having the time of your life. What so killed T Pain shit was laziness. Was his no. own his what own laziness. What killed T Pain shit was music industry bullshit and Jay Z's bitch ass. A lot of his shit got fucking killed and pushed down, and then when he resurfaced like five years later, now you get the Lil Wayne and T Pain fucking. Uh, combo album even though that shit was recorded like 10 years before like just shit like that like the industry did T-Pain wrong you know because you know, they were all mad at him because of autotune but yeah even though he didn't need it he did to Chris Brown but they did it and then it paved way for a bunch which of un- the time man which actually he birthed a bunch of untalented motherfuckers because he used autotune and then Jay-Z's bitch ass ended up using autotune and then I was like oh yeah uh Death of Auto Tune. Jay Z needs should have apologized to T Pain a while ago. Hopefully he did. Apparently he never didn't. Um, but I'm just saying, would you want to see Tulane in the Pac-12, even though they beat USC? Imagine Tulane versus Stanford. Bro, who has the biggest endowment in the Mountain West? Say San Diego State, but it's probably San definitely. Diego State's not even in the top five, my guy. It's definitely not Boise or San Jose. Not, definitely not Colorado State. Again, none of those are even in the top UNLV? five. UNLV? You're like literally going from the bottom up. God damn. It's definitely not. So it's not Boise. It's not UNLV. You mentioned, it's not one, Wyoming. You mentioned one of the teams who's in the top. Colorado State? What the fuck? Um, I'm going to say Air Force. Fuck no, they're the last. Well, the government. I just assume that's like they're endless, the last. Endless amount of money, but um, 
mentioned them earlier in today's canon. Canon? What? In today's minutes, they were already referenced. Three, Utah three. State. That's disgusting. No, nah, I'm just kidding. They're not. But they're in the top can, five. I'm about to say, what the hell? No. No. Nah, um, New Mexico. Get the fuck out of here. One. Colorado State. Two. New Mexico has the highest endowment. Yep. Two. Wyoming. What? Three. I said Wyoming. Three. Utah State. Four. That makes sense. And that's that's the only ones over five five hundred million. I think I played this clip already on the show. But everyone else is under five hundred million. After that, you got to go Reno, which is four fifty. Uh huh. Go to um. Oh, you know, he's barely 360. Boise's 150. Boise is the second lowest. Well, it's Idaho. Boise is the second lowest. Uh, Fresno's 218. Shocked at Fresno, but not shocked because it's Fresno. San Diego's 360. San Diego should be higher, bro. San Jose is 230. How San Diego, all those rich ass people live in San Diego, you tell me their endowment's that low? That's embarrassing. Well, that little they would have got that little bit of money just to not be much in the past. Well, it's more than San Jose and Fresno State. But San Jose, I get it because San Jose is in a crowded ass Bay Area market. Stanford and Cal are right up the road. But bottom line is, who wants to see Tulane versus Stanford in the Pac-12 title game? First off, that doesn't even make geographical sense. At least what I said makes geographical sense, and it cuts down on travel, which, you know, was kind of an expense last time. People didn't didn't know that that's a travel expense, for real, for real. And these Mountain West schools already play Pac-12 schools. They should just stop being stupid and just do it. And if they still use the PC3, I want my fucking check. I want a cut. And if you say Pac-West, I swear to God, I will, I will hire a lawyer. I want my money. You guys become a super conference and use any of the nomenclature I've created over the past five years talking about this shit on wax. I need money and like unlimited access to any media event for real, for real. I need that finder's fee, bro. You got to run me that. I had the for I had the the foresight and the knowledge that people who are probably making millions of dollars and have law degrees can't figure out how to have a successful fucking football conference. And let's be honest, yeah, it's a conference of multiple sports, but football pays the bills and keeps the lights on. That's all I'm saying. And if the Mountain West title game is going to be in Vegas, and the Pac-12 media day is going to be in Vegas, and Mountain West media day is going to be in uh, Vegas, you ready for this? why don't you just be all in the same conference? You ready for this? Tell me the endowment for uh, Washington State and Oregon State, please. Let's continue. Wait, before we get to that, let's continue with uh, some Mountain West trivia. Oh, by the way, I got Who one. Who has the most championships in the Mountain West, excluding football? I don't think you're going to get this one, Chief. It has, it has to be San Diego State. Not even close, my boy. It can't be Wyoming. They only have one. San Diego State only has one championship. <sighs> Shit. Even in baseball? Period. Fuck. Uh... Oh, it's not UN, UN, it might be UNLV because they have basketball. Again, we talked about this school earlier in our in our today's. There's minutes. no way Utah State is the most championships. Not, not Utah State. <laughs> about to say, Another stop, school we talked. Stop about. playing with me, bro. Fresno State. We talked about them as walk-on programs. Oh, San Jose State. They have ten. I said that. Everyone else has three. Championships in different sports. Yep. Well, like I said, it's, it's kind of making too much sense to not just the pack. Because the Pac-12 is just really just like, look, we've lost. Let's just combine with the Mountain West and, like, lock down all these f- these three- and four-star recruits. Oregon State, give me over under. What do you think it is? It's definitely under 750K. K? I meant million. My bad. Sorry. Definitely not. 850 million. Wow. That's impressive. Okay. You see, Kenny? You got some residual Nike you money. You see, Kenny? All right. What's, what's Washington State's? 
They were probably around six fifty. That that way the head. And also, what I learned from so again, Danny Gonzalez. When you're Mexico, talking about these teams joining, you're talking about literally these teams. Literally, in a single year, they're all broke, dude. I don't care. Making twice as much as any team in the Mountain West. And you're going to add fucking... Go add two lanes. Let's look up the American Alliance Conference, please. Let's look up two lanes numbers. Let's look up... Tulane might have money, bro. They probably do. They are a really good academic school. Tulsa? Yeah, because Tulsa's the powerhouse. University of Texas, San Antonio, El Paso? Yeah. UTSA? Roadrunners? She. Let me guess, SMU? They're in the SMU category, yep. Wait, who's in the SMU category? Tulane. Shit. Two billion, my guy. Two Billy? Billy. Oh, God, it's going to happen, isn't it? It's disgusting. Kenny, I always tell you, literally, I literally always tell you, bro, follow the money. You're talking about product. You're talking about community. Because if you have a shitty fans. product, nobody's going to want to buy it. You're talking about movie, TV deals. You're talking about all this shit that does not fucking matter, It kind of does matter. Follow the fucking money. It kind of matters. Literally, Tulane and, and SMU could just get together and have a conference. So why that, haven't they? And have why a conference with more money than the Mountain West. Combined. And why haven't they? Combined. And why haven't they? That's fucking wild, and why bro. why haven't they? They could literally. Why haven't they? they could, I don't know. They could build their own. Because there's shit network. on the field. Well, not too late. But there's shit on the field. That's wild, They bro. can't. They, they don't win book football games, bro. That's wild. And if they're not selling out their tickets, like, what's the point of going? Like, what's the point? All those teams you're talking about, who, who of them can beat an Alabama? Who of them can beat a Sheesh. Texas Tech? Even UTS. Tulsa's in a different league, my guy. Yeah, I told you. Tulsa's in the Billy still. Tulsa gets their ass clapped every year by Oklahoma. We've had this conversation in group chat. So who the fuck is going to believe Tulsa's a... I don't care how much money they have. You don't win. You don't win. So why would I... Like, I don't care how much money you do have, bro. That money gets split from Kidding. Title Nine too. We were literally just talking about this. Man. Go where you're going to play. Yeah, go where you're going to play. Fuck, fuck the Pac-12. Fuck all the conference shit. Hey, go guess where what? you're going to play. Guess what? And go where they have resources and you're going to feel comfortable. Bro, you have, Boise State don't even have resources like that, but they win every year. They're not even number one in their conference in fucking no resources. Comment. So, uh, by the way, uh, fun fact I learned from Danny Gonzalez, the New Mexico um, head coach, is that like 75% of all New Mexico student athletes, once they get to New Mexico, they never leave. Like the state. Like they live there the rest of their lives. That's cool. I was like, holy shit. It's kind of lit. Oh, uh, Real quick on college football before we wrap it up. It's the AP polls released, Georgia's one, Michigan two, Ohio State three, Alabama four, LSU five. USC six. I was USC not in the top five. That's wild. First off. Second off. LSU, that's why. TCU 17 after being in the NCAA championship. UCLA not in the top 25. to seven, my guy. Tom Wu, number 23 after Okay, I need you to not say that. Sounds like you're gangbanging. After being... Five and seven and losing half of their number one 2022 20, 20, class. Texas A&M. OU, number 20. After, yeah, another down year last year. Went six and seven. Nikki going to be so mad at us. So she put those on the run now. She going to be mad at you the way you said it, though. Tom, move. Yeah, I need you to not say that. Might be some talking listening outside. I'm lying is, yo. When it comes to this college football, it's cool that, I mean, hell, Harvard and Yale have money. Do you want to go play football at Harvard and Yale? I no. mean, if you're going to play and you're comfortable. You I mean, do you, would you want to go play though? Would you want to go play though? And then put them in the fucking mount, put them in the, in the Pac-12. Cause they're, cause they're academics aligned. Are they even D1? Exactly. That's my point. See my point? Nobody's going to show up 
to watch Stanford beat the shit out of Harvard and Yale and have comparable academic scores and endowments. You need competitive TVs. TV is hard enough to fucking sell to people nowadays. You need something that they'll actually watch. I watch Oregon State versus... I watched uh, Boise State versus Stanford. I watched Cal versus Nevada because I've watched it before. Like, I I watch Wazoo versus uh, Fresno State. Okay. So I can't say Tamu, but you can say Wazoo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you thought about that. Yeah, you thought yeah. about that. Nah, because it's like, <laughs> now if I said Bazu or Kazu, then it would be like, hey, you hear what you just said? I said Wazu. I never really got why they called it Wazu. Like, I mean, I get it, but I don't. It's Pullman, bro. They, they're weird up there. Say Cougars. They couldn't just say WSU. Because it's a zoo. Cougars. I mean, Cougars aren't at zoos, but, you know, whatever. Okay, it's cool. It works. I just know that they shout out to the Bledsoe's <sighs> again. Should probably add some clarification behind Bledsoe's. <laughs> Saying Tamu. All right, it's Tam U actually. That sounds just a so piss pe- just a piss people. Off. I mean, isn't that what the country is? Just gentrified. Bro, what well? happened to all my fucking sounds? Who's in here? Someone deleted some shit. I'm mad. Damn. Only 10 songs in here. All bad. All right. Well, I guess there's no... Touchdown! Or turnover. They actually did Tom Papa Dirty, too. First up... An intern told him to get off the field. I was like, damn. The Jets signed Dalvin Cook. Touchdown or turnover? Touchdown. Especially in fantasy. Now I got to take him and Brees Hall. Yeah, that's why I say it's a turnover. But he did say he always liked them over the Dolphins, but I think that's cap. I mean, they're a better team, and I would rather trust Aaron Rodgers in year. I trust Aaron Rodgers in year 17 over two of who mm-hmm. decided. Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, though, too. He plays, though, and he has a Hall of Fame career to stand behind. And he seems like he's making Zach Wilson a better person, a better QB. <laughs> he's making up for all his wrongs? Yeah. He's like, Wilson, you're way too cocky, man. Oh, no. I mean, the Giants have, like, literally Jets. nine. I mean, the Jets have, like, literally nine receivers, so. I'm just saying. And they literally now have, like, four running backs. So. Can, we, can we can we say Sauce Gardner was better than Jalen Ramsey when Jalen Ramsey first came out? I mean. Can we say that? Jalen was playing more safety when he first came out, but, yeah. Was he? Was he was he playing safety for the Jags? He was a little or was bit. he going up against Steve Smith and number one receivers? He was doing both. Mm, they kind of had nice safety. They had Tashawn Gibson or some shit. They had somebody at safety. It was nice. Their DB room, they had AJ Bouye. Like they they were solid on defense. They were loaded on defense. But going back to your Dolphins comparison. Um, just the got Jets hurt. have a better O line. Wash, it's a wash probably. Kind of a wash. Both have injuries. Much better D line though. Much and better linebackers. D-line. Much better linebackers. Just a much better defense. I trust the Jets defense over the Dolphins defense. Yeah, pretty much. And they're fairly even. But I trust Robert Sala over Mike McDaniel. And you can just look at the Chargers game. It's proof positive. The Jets, Mike White was out here looking like he was about to get out here looking like he was Tony Romo in this bitch. Joe Mm -hmm. Flacco even led them to a comeback win. That shit was wild. That Jets team is ready right now. All right. Anthony Richardson was named the cold starter. Touchdown and turnover. Definitely a touchdown. I think he needs to stop playing in the preseason with the twos and the threes. He needs to be playing with ones because that'll kind of distort his, you know, understanding and concept of the offense when you're playing with guys who aren't going to be here this year. He needs to be playing with the starters 
and only the starters. So here's my thing. I'm going to say it's a touchdown, but I'm not really sure. And, again, this goes back to, like, everything we were talking about during draft season. It's like, yeah, on paper, the Colts make sense for Anthony Richardson because he's a generational talent. They have a team need, and they have enough talent around him to kind of help him succeed. However, I feel like, man, just being with Ursay, and I sent you a meme today where it was like, Daniel Snyder passing on the baton to Ursay as the worst owner. And it's like, that's the part of it that I'm like, uh, I don't know. This could go either way. I mean, you see it with Jonathan Taylor, right? Like two years ago, Jonathan Taylor couldn't do any wrong in Ursay's eyes. And now they're having passive aggressive scuttlebutt or whatever. No, it's the fuck very, you call it's it. very aggressive. He got ex- he's he got ex- an excused absence from the team. He's saying he has no back problems. He out here walking like an eighty year old man, looking like James Harden in a fat suit. I don't know what's going on with Jonathan Taylor. Well, he got his ankle worked on. He said I don't know what's going on with Jonathan Taylor. Pretty much, they just don't. He don't want to pay him. And that's what I'm saying. So that goes back to the culture. The this owner. is the same man who cut Peyton Manning. But that's what I'm saying. That None goes, of you are safe. That's what I'm saying. That goes back to the culture and the ownership. Got and, rid of Dwight and, Freeney and Bob and Sanders. I don't, I don't quietly. know. I don't know if that's going to help Richardson. But what I will say is, at least in this past four months, where we've gotten to know him, five six months, where we've got to know him in the public eye, Richardson has done no wrong. Like he's out here signing every single autograph until literally they're p- curtain calling him. Like he came That's not in, the issue though. He came in humble, not like a, hey, not like I'm going to be the starter. Like he really grinded, beat out Mishnu, even though it was probably Minshew. Always, Jesus Minshew, Christ, man. Even though it was probably always, even though that was probably always going to be the case, he really did the thing. Minshew has to get the other guys ready. He's shown glimpses already, like, like he's giving me Lamar vibes in terms of that. In terms of how he's approaching it. Like, he's just putting his head down. He's not, like, calling his shot or doing anything crazy. But he's just really being a lunch pail guy. And I and I, I really like that. I just wish that he was with any other team besides the Colts. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I get that. Because, I mean, look at who he has to throw to. And if Jonathan Taylor isn't there, you pretty much doomed this kid his rookie year. Yeah. If you're not going to pay Jonathan Taylor, you're not going to pay Anthony Richardson if he becomes a superstar quarterback. And, is and that the, what you're telling me? And, Cause, well, what I'm telling you is if their Chick, receivers are Chick goes astray this year, you're not going to be able to say it's because, oh, dude didn't watch film or because dude didn't care or because Cause dude, Matt Ryan. dude, whatever. Like, you're not going to say any of that. It's going to be, oh, he's a black quarterback and he can't throw. And that's going to be the narrative. No, the narrative is going to be he should have stayed in college because he wasn't ready because he ran a gimmicky ass yeah, offense in and Florida. And that will parlay into, well, he's a black quarterback and he's not going to get a second chance. And they'll lean into that racist trope, but I think it's more but what, this dude was really green and what probably could have stayed in the What I'm saying, though, is if things don't go perfectly, the tide is going to turn to, yes, your point of like factually correct, but that's going to parlay into. Those racist ass sports. Those things. racist ass tropes because of the area that he's in, the owner that he's under, and the team that he's with. Yeah, you're right. And that's what I that's what I'm sad about. By the way, put some fucking respect on Jordan Love's name. All state great. That had to do with anything, but just wanted to say it because he's looking really good in the preseason. All right, Brock Purdy keeping his starting job over Trey Lance and Sam Darnold. The Packers really don't have another Darnold. great quarterback. That's crazy. Brock Purdy keeping his job. At this point, man, the Niners, this is probably their fall apart season. I don't see it happening. He was getting, Trey Lance was getting touched way too much. So well, Trey Lance is getting touched too much. What you think is going to happen to Brock Purdy, who's much slower? Well, that's why he doesn't they have got the arm talent. Trey Lance to avoid those down years because they had one of those down years. Man. I don't trust the right side of that line. I don't trust the right side of that offensive line. I can trust Trent Williams. Everybody else is sus to me. 
doesn't help that this dude had a freak injury last year, had a whole year taken from him. Like it's not it's not even a fair everybody wants to compare his trajectory, bro. It's not he's not Justin Herbert. He's not these other dudes. It's not fair to compare him. Like he if Justin Herbert shattered his fucking leg his first year in the league, people will be calling Justin Herbert a bust. They're saying he has weak uh a weak mentals. You can't even grade Trey Lance as far as I'm concerned. It's just not it's not fair. And he went what ten for fifteen? Well, I think even beyond he went that. like ten for fifteen and one hundred eighty six yards and a touchdown or something. I was gonna say even beyond that. Everybody just played, focused on he got sacked. But I'm saying even when he played those what one the one two games and the few snaps here, like Raiders he made clapped an impact. him. Though. He made an impact. And people forget the Raiders clapped, but the Raiders went four and zero. But last I'm saying year in the, in the regular season last year when he actually played, he made an impact. He wasn't just out there being a bum. He wasn't out there being a game manager. Like, he made an impact. He did what they drafted him to do. Give them a little bit more than what they had in Jimmy G. But then that defaulted into, well, we'll just get another Jimmy G. Can we just say Brock Purdy was a freak of Nate? Like, does Brock Purdy do that to any other team he gets drafted to? Let's stop acting like Brock Purdy was some gym, bro. Most of y'all didn't even watch Iowa State play in college. Play, y'all didn't watch Iowa State play. Brees Hall was what made that team go, and their defense, and the receivers that he had, and a couple tight ends. And Purdy was good game manager getting the ball out. But let's not sit up here and act like everybody who just wants to think Purdy is some I think franchise it's all guy. The above. I like, think it's all of the above. I don't think he's necessarily a gem. But he's also not Mr. Irrelevant. It's and the, I also don't think, like, I don't think he would have the same sort of success he would have had anywhere on else. another team. But I also don't think he would have been a bum. Yeah, but he wouldn't have had, he wouldn't have looked like a Pro Bowl quarterback or a franchise QB. I'm like, bro, you got to realize Shanahan's system can bend to any quarterback. That's why the offense looks different. If Trey Lance is out there. Well, not just that. But or Jimmy's out there. Not just that. But Purdy's I mean, out there. You have two prolific generational talents in Debo and Samuel and even is Kittle. Debo Samuel a generational talent? Receiver? I mean, Debo Samuel and... Uh, Kittle's a generational talent. And a CMC and Kittle. Yeah, you said you had you could have just Ayuk, stopped CMC. Ayuk is a great talent. It's he's a deep not threat. a generational talent, but he's a great talent. You know, generational talent is Randy Moss. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, those are generational talents. Corey Holtz is generational I mean, talent. Debo's not a generational talent. He's a great he's Anquan Bolden. Nah. He's the final he's, version of Anquan nah, Bolden. He he's nah, kind of Anquan Bolden ish. Nah. He's not the route runner yet. Nah. He's not Anquan Bolden. He runs like Anquan. He's faster than Anquan Bolden. He's yeah. more explosive. He's like a running back playing receiver. He's that's what I'm saying, bro. Like not that we haven't seen anything It's like a possession him. offense, too. Not that we haven't seen anything like him. We just haven't seen anyone use someone the way that he's been used. Like, we haven't seen someone with his kind of skills be used in the way that he's being used. And it work. Exactly. Like, he's actually a really good receiver. Like, yeah. He's not just like a gadget a, an player. explosive Percy Harvin. Like, he's actually a... He's not a fat, He's not explosive as Percy Harvin. Percy Harvin was damn near Yeah, but he's also bigger than Percy Harvin. He's not really bigger than Percy Harvin. He's a lot stockier. Percy Harvin. I'd much rather tackle Percy Harvin than tackle, tackle Debo Samuel. Percy Harvin's a... Okay. You thinking that? Yeah, but Percy Harvin... That was taking handoffs 80 yards to the house as a freshman against LSU. I'm not saying Percy Harvin was a bum, dude. I'm saying he's faster and pretty strong, but Debo's, like, violently aggressive after the catch. Like a running back, more so. Percy will stiff you, hit you with a stiff arm, juke you, and then run by you. So it's more embarrassing with Percy. With Debo, it's like this, this motherfucker takes about three people to tackle him, like Kittle. CMC is a mixture of kind of both, but because you have all these great pieces on offense, yeah, you could. You can put Derek Carr in that Bro, offense, Debo's a cool 20 pounds heavier than Percy. He's 22. He's what, 220? Yes. 
Okay, Percy was what, like 195, 205? 200. 205. 200. We'll, 200. we'll give him 205. I'd say he's probably under that. I mean, which is fair. He played running back. He was getting running back touches. Like, Debo is actually. And Percy's 5'11". Debo's actually. Debo 6. Feet or 6'1"? Six, 6. But he's a tall They're the six. same height, bro. Dude, five eleven. Dude, eight. you know how this shit works, man. They be rounding <laughs> shit up. Like wow, two hundred pounds is not the same with everyone. There's two hundred pounds with water weight. Like that's that's your full weight that you're going into game day. And then there's fucking two hundred pounds. I'm really two ten. There's Canelo, but the I day took of a fight. bunch of fucking detox because I want to keep my weight down and get whatever bonus I'm supposed to get. Situation. All I know is when it comes down to it, you could put a lot of quarterbacks in this Niners offense and they would not fail. Yes, so that, that's the point. To sit up here and act like Purdy is the future, no, he's just what you're used to as to how this offense would function. But you don't know, like, if you put a Lamar Jackson in the Niners offense, he would be unstoppable because of his mobility and throwing on the run and outside of the pocket in the ways, the motions and different things you could use because defenses have to stress over a thousand things. With Purdy, you pin your ears back, and if you get a lucky hit on his elbow and snap his his UCL or whatever, then yeah, there you go. But it's too early to judge Trey Lance, and I wouldn't have all this hope and faith in Purdy to be like the next Tom Brady. Because when he's not, if he's not even Jake DeLome, y'all going to feel real sick. you will be like, damn, the Niners had a chance. Then they'll be like, you know what? The Niners should have just took Michael Parsons. They should have never took Trey Lance. Bro, all y'all wanted Trey Lance. There were reports that saying the Niners wanted Mac Jones, which would have been a horrible pick, if we're being honest. Because Mac Jones ain't doing so great with the Patriots right now. Shout out to Jordan Love, though. All right, uh, moving on. Joe Mixon was found not guilty. Um, it was menacing of, charges. Yeah, menacing charges, waving the gun at the woman or whatever. No, he waved the gun at some kids who hopped out. No, fatigued. I thought this was the other thing, the thing before that. Pretty sure it's, he said he was defending people. I saw a couple statements where he said he was defending himself and his family. I thought this was the thing before that. Mm-hmm. Double check it. Because he had like three things. Yeah, but it probably is that one though. Because he wasn't getting charged with the one where yeah, they came to his house. Yeah, he wasn't getting charged with the other one, yeah. That one already got dropped. Yeah, he said he was, he was totally not guilty, so there you go. Justice is served. For all you people who still hate Joe Mixon, I guess you're just going to Yeah, this was the Joe road Mixon. rage incident where he pulled out a gun on her face. Pulled a gun to her face. Hey, man. Road in roadway road rage situation. Oh my god! I thought you said road versus wave. That's why I slowed I was like, down. Not this shit again. I was like, wait, road I was like, not this shit again. rage. I didn't do shit the first time. Don't say that. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like that whole situation, man. Depending on the state, you can pull out a burner, and it's like a fucking normal Tuesday. So people think, oh, my God, he put on a gun during a road rage incident. Depending on what state you're in, that's kind of like the rules of engagement. Is you just got the burner with you. In Arizona, you could just pull out a fucking missile at a stoplight, and ain't nobody going to say shit because it's open carry. So for people who don't live in states where, yeah, you can have that burner, you can have that, that equalizer out on you, just know it looks brash, and you're going to have some oblique opinion of him but you probably don't even know the gun laws in the state you're in let alone the state he's in so go do some research first and then go realize when people know they can have a gun out and pull that shit out on you they are very reluctant to start shit with you 
And there's also some people who are very reluctant to pull so, that thing out because they lived in a state where they couldn't pull that thing out. Now they can. So technically, you can't have a missile in Arizona, but they don't have restrictions on rocket launchers. But you can't have rockets. That was very cheap of you. <laughs> Thanks for the saying. clarification. I'm just saying you can't have, you can't have a missile, but you, you could have a fucking 357, which is a te- missile in your fucking hand. You could technically have a a missile launcher, just can't have the actual missile. Yeah, uh, you could have a crossbow with lead in it. All right, um, Arizona's crazy. Packers tackle Bacardi. How do you say his name? Ba- David ba- Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari. There you go. David Bakhtiari. Not like Bok Choi, but Bakhtiari. Is not on the trade block. Touchdown or turnover. That's smart because he's Jordan Love's. Franchise tackle. Don't be stupid. Don't break up a really good offensive line because you're trying to get rid of old veterans. You already got rid of Aaron Rodgers. That's most of the money on your books. Pretty sure they paid Rashad, Sean Gary. They're about to pay Rashad Gary. So, I feel be like- cool. You don't have any money tied up in receiver and quarterback. You need to just be fucking trying to get your offense back together. I don't know, man. The Packers are pretty good at getting rid of offensive linemen like two years early. Mm. Like they're pretty good at getting rid of offensive linemen before they're like washed. I'll give him that, but I mean, you could Bakhtiari could slide to tackle to right tackle. Or you can kick him inside. Let's not sit up here and act like he can't play the position anymore. No, definitely not. He's better than Cole Miller and it's Taylor. More than, in, it's He's better more than Taylor of, Lewan. More of injuries, I think, especially when you're that big. But yeah. He can still play. For he sure. was super athletic coming out of Colorado. He just wasn't very strong. All right. Alex Barr visited the Giants. Touchdown or turn. I'm, Todd Barr. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said Alex Barr. I was going to say what? Todd Barr visited the Giants. Touchdown or turnover. It'll be interesting where he ends up. I, I don't know why he didn't just go back to the Cowboys or go to the Saints. I feel like he's what they wanted that. Edge rusher out of Wisconsin to be. Zach Bond. There you go. Well, he's younger and cheaper than. So. I'm That's saying, the perfect mentor for him. If he I'm ends saying. up on the Raiders, don't throw up in your mouth. Nah. The Raiders don't need him. The Raiders need a coverage linebacker. Which they all passed on in the draft and free agency. Like the past decade. And the Ravens signed Ronald Darby after uh, Marlon Humphrey was reportedly having um, foot issues. Foot issues. Had to get surgery. He's going to be out a couple games. Touchdown turnover. Ravens adding Darby. <laughs> Touchdown. Because, I mean, you always need that DB can come in and play uh, slot corner. As long as he's not holding anybody. I'll tell you about these Florida State corners, man. Hit or miss. Wasn't he at Ohio State? No, Ronald Darby went to Florida State. Are you sure about that? You want to bet? No. Are you sure you want to legally bet? I just said no. Cool. I just wanted to make sure we 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 covered that for the sake of consent. So who's the other one that got drafted? Out of Florida State? That same year. I always get him mixed up. Uh, the Ohio State corner with the locks? Yeah. Uh, totally spacing out on his name. You know who I'm talking about, though, right? Uh, something it's like Ro- the same class. Roby. Yeah, something. there you go. Something Roby. Bradley Roby. There you go. I always get them mixed up. All right. Take or tangent. Take, take, take. All right, the moment we've been waiting for. Ezekiel Elliott signs a one-year, $6 million deal with the New England Patriots. Take or tangent, Kenny? Taking Zeke in fantasy. Oh, God, just because he's going to eat up Stevenson's touchdowns? All, all his pass blocking reps, all his goal line runs. I wouldn't draft for Andre Stevenson this year. But I'll take Zeke. I have a strict no Patriots fly zone. You're just, going to take Zeke. You're full of shit. There's just too many. You're going to draft Zeke. There's just too many variables in that offense always, and they have so many mid-ass weapons that it's like, 
they're gonna pass on Jacobs. They're just gonna just to take they're just gonna Cook. play different matchups every game. They're just gonna to- zone in on different players. Like gonna draft Josh Jacobs this year. Maybe if he slides, but I'm not taking him in the top five like most people. That's wild to take Josh Jacobs in the top five and he hasn't even signed his contract. He could really just sit out a whole year. He won't. He we know he won't, but I mean, if you're not gonna sit out, you might as well just report. But because what is the leverage? I mean, the market's already set now. I'm just glad for Zeke that he went somewhere where he at least got fair market value, and he's, he's six million going somewhere that kind of has a role for him, and he's going somewhere that actually wanted him. They were they were one of the first teams to work him out. So I'm happy for him for that. Six and a half million market value for someone who you say is a Hall of Fame running back. I mean, he's had fucking six thousand yard receivers and only missed the playoffs once when he was hurt. And he's had injuries and he clearly lost a step. He hasn't really had injuries just last year and then that one year that he missed. Wear and tear. I mean, yeah, it's more wear and tear for sure. Because he clearly is not. He doesn't. Have but I think that's really why the Patriots are good because they're good at managing that sort of situation. They'll find the plays that make this make the most sense. And unlike the Cowboys, again, that offense has so many mid ash players that they just play the matchups. And they'll be a lot more strategic with the plays and the spots that they pick for him versus the Cowboys are just like, oh, yeah, we're running inside, put Zeke in. So the offense, so the defense is able to So Zeke is going to be the home run guy and Stevenson is going to be the inside the tackles guy? I'm not sure. I don't know what they're going to do. It's going to be a mix. I think they'll they'll probably have Stevenson... Or two second. series, and then Zeke will come in on the third series. I think that's kind of more of the situation that they'll you be have to, to be every other series. You have to get Zeke involved on the passing game. So, But that's what I'm saying is I don't think it'll be a situational thing. I think they're comparable enough to where they'll just swap them out. They'll just – Stevenson will get two series and Zeke will get one sort of situation. And yeah. then they'll use the other mixed – the other running backs they have and mix them in. For How the many yards does Zeke have this year? Over say, under seven hundred. I say I'd about seven hundred. I say six probably three hundred passing receiving yards. Maybe like eight touchdowns. I give him five hundred total yards of offense. Yeah, you should be in district. And like twelve touchdowns. That's wild. That's fucking. Williams. Remember when Garrett Blunt like had That's like Williams number? Remember when Garrett Blunt had a shit ton of rushing touchdowns? Yeah, and no catches. That won't be Zeke. Okay, are you sure? Yeah, that won't be Zeke. Okay, Zeke can actually catch. We know. So can people, Adrian people Peterson. People gotta stop acting like Zeke can't catch, bro. People acting like Adrian Peterson couldn't catch either. Look how that turned out. They swore that man couldn't catch, even though he ran and. Oklahoma's offense, which yeah, was a but fucking when spread Adrian offense. Peterson is different. It's like, why would I throw him the ball when I could when just, I hand, could it just hand it to him? His catch was like 54 and mad, and I was so fucking mad, bro. I was like, y'all need to fix this. I mean, you gave him 98 speed, 99 agility, acceleration, which is fine, but like an 85 strength. But like, his catching is 54? Y'all fucking rude. That was real disrespectful. We talked about this one a little bit earlier, but Jonathan Taylor returned to Colt camp, Colts camp and then immediately left for personal matter. Take your tangent. He was pretty much granted a leave of absence. What's the point of practicing, bro? I want to get fucking paid now. I've been the best running back for two years. I mean, you can't say he's not acting in good faith, right? He showed up. All I know is the Raiders fumbled a bag by not drafting That's all you have to do. Him. The Raiders fumbled a bag by not drafting him. I will forever be mad about that. But what I'm saying is you can't say, and oh, we don't. We're not the same con- year. And Justin Jefferson. They passed on Justin Jefferson, too. You can't say, oh, we're not going to negotiate unless you show up to camp. Well, guess what? I showed up to camp. And I'm getting my ankle worked on. So Because you give me the ball 370 times a fucking year. All right. 49ers said they would have signed Phil Rivers if they in the Super Bowl. Take her tangent. Well, Jimmy must have been 
That's just a fuck you to Jimmy Garoppolo. Now you're making me a Jimmy <laughs> Garoppolo defender. Like, who the fuck? This you is why you lost the Super Bowl the first. Dad who ain't done shit all season. Mr. Sidearm. Mr. Sidearm who can't throw Only deep. Won, so I'm like, just going to play. playoff games his whole career. Mr. Sidearm who can't throw deep. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do? I'm playing fucking uh, both my safeties in the box. Congratulations. Philip Rivers could throw deep. In his early career. Yeah, that's true. But, like, with the Colts, he wasn't throwing deep, bro. Bro, did that's... you look at his right tackles? Did you look at the left tackle? With the Chargers, though? The Chargers? Thought... Chargers have had a good right Phil- tackle Phillip, since Phillip Shane Phillip Olivier. Phillip Rivers' O-line was, like, low-key trash post it. Marcus LT. McNeil? Yeah, po- definitely post Marcus McNeil. And Chris Hardwick? Chris Hardwick was before, wasn't he? No, Nick Hardwick, my bad. Yeah, that was before. Chris Hardwick is a comedian. He was the host of Walking or Talking Dead. Yeah, they haven't had a good right tackle in decades. And uh, Chief Chiefs Aholic, the Chief Superfan. Probably called his ass. Who wears the Wolf's fucking mask. Was indicted on 19 charges. Take your tangent. See if he beats them. If he beats any of those charges, bro, the American justice system is a joke. I was just thinking about that movie I was telling you about earlier, Cherry, because that's what he did. He robbed a bunch of banks. Jesus Christ. But, yeah, I'll save you two hours. Don't watch the movie. Everything is about the girl, period. That's it. That's a very toxic, stupid-ass movie, the way you explained it. It it I'd rather watch Baby Driver again. Definitely was. I'm going to watch Baby Driver again. All right, fair fade. Sean Payton refused to pull Russell Wilson and starters out of preseason in a loss to the Cardinals until points were scored. Which took an entire half. Fair or fade? That's a fade. Y'all not going to ruin my reputation as an offensive coach, even though I kind of stifled Reggie Bush's career. There, I said it. Uh, yeah. You have all this talent on offense, but you just suck. Go figure. See, what I don't Judy like... Judy scored a touchdown, and guess what? The Cardinals ended up winning that shit on a two-point conversion in the game. See, what I don't like is the whole revisionist history of, like, now it's cute for TikTokers and podcast hosts to be like, oh, yeah, Sean Payton ain't really done shit since post his Super Bowl. Really? Well, where that's where has that take been over the I last I never said decade? that. I'm just saying. I'm not saying you're saying that. Cool, I'm just cool. saying. There are people out there saying it, and I'm like, well, where has that take the last 10 years? You, you were saying that during Drew Brees' last season. Didn't Drew Brees set the everyone, fucking touchdown and everyone, yardage record? Exactly. Everyone was looking to them as kind of like a duo. Everyone was looking at them like, oh, they're a package deal. And now all of a sudden it's like, well, Sean Payton ain't really done shit. Since his Super Bowl. And Russell Wilson ain't really done shit since his Super Bowl. Bro, he won a Super Bowl with the Saints. That's like fucking winning a Super Bowl with the Saints. That's like (laughs) winning a Super Bowl with the Texans. I was thinking if the Raiders won a Super Bowl. And he fucking helped uplift the city of New Orleans after Katrina. Did more for the city than the government did. And a fucking sitting president. People are stupid. I don't think they realize how improbable it was for the Saints to get to the Super Bowl and win. Well, yeah, that fucking onside kick. And the pick six. That's why you can never take anything away from him because nobody else would make that fucking call. The balls. That's why you can't take that away from him. The testicular fortitude. His spine must be made out of fucking cobalt. And oh yeah, he got a fucking Netflix bag for Bounty Gate. Wow. That's wild when you think about that. And he retired. He got a fucking Bounty. He got fucking... Blackballed out the league for a year, but got a Netflix bag out of it. So jokes on you. Retired and came back to coach Denver. I don't know. I mean, Sean Payton is a perfectionist when it comes to his offense. So you know he don't fuck around. So I don't know why y'all shocked. Yeah, I don't. I don't. He's know. allergic to bad offenses. I don't know how it's gonna work, but it's kind of what you signed up for, man. He's a Hall of Fame coach just because he made Taysom Hill a thing and got him paid three different times. It's a tight end now, still fucking getting quarterback reps. We'll see how it goes, man, but, yeah. I don't know. Just seems like there's a lot of... 
it, it could go either way. Like, he's been talking about last year the team got a lot of attention, a lot of hype, adding Russell Wilson, everything they gave up for him, the changes they made. They were underwhelming. This year is the exact opposite. Wilson's not getting hyped. The offense is not getting hyped. The team's being overlooked. But Sean Payton is getting a lot of attention. So either it's going to go great in terms of he's taking all the attention off his team, or if it doesn't work, it's going to heat up real quick there in Denver. And he pretty much, you know. Because they they shit, changed kick, over the whole thing. They changed over the. Kicked in Nathaniel Hackett's spine. Front office, kicked in Hackett's spine, yeah. I mean, they're still kind of tied to Wilson for a little bit longer, so. At least two or three years. Yeah. It's kind of fucked. And Sierra is, is pregnant with another baby. I don't know what this one is, but it says former Raiders Marcus Allen on Josh Jacobs' contract. Quote, it's like collusion. He's right. I don't know what that means. Like, I need more context. You know what the definition of collusion is? Yeah, but how is that? Like, what is he referring to? Like The fact that he hasn't been paid yet. The fact that he's holding out. The fact that Taylor. The fact that all these dudes got franchise tag. The fact that Cook. Got eight point six million. And that I think the league is colluding to not pay running backs is what he's saying. Yes, because like okay, Devontae makes what twenty three million a year. No, nah, he doesn't make that much, but yeah, and incentives though, baby. But what's base salary? Fuck, that was bound to happen. You kept leaning back on that. His base salary is at least eighteen million a year for Devontae. I know that for sure. That was a big argument. Like, yo, I should be making at least 20 a year or close to. I think he wanted 23, and he got pretty close to 23. He makes 15. Makes 15? So, like, 18 with incentives because it was a huge-ass contract. No, he makes 15, period. Mm. Wasn't it like 100? It was a fat-ass contract extension. He makes six guaranteed, and then the rest is 10 is. I could have sworn he had a higher base salary. Well, his base salary is fifteen million, but I'm saying his guaranteed money is six million. Left, and then the rest is prorated. It's eight million. Wow. Oh, that's why Cat's trying to get paid full full time, because he just set a Raiders receiving record in his first season, and then makes over twenty next year. That's what I was about to say. Like, he's he gonna makes hit- twenty five next year. His what was his whole contract? He makes forty four the next year. Yeah, he's not going to see. like 35 and 25. He's not going to see the end of that contract. They're not going to let him. And then he makes like 44 and 26. God damn it. We have Chandler Jones on the books till 27. Wow. 2027? Yep. Chandler, what the fuck? Yannick was cheaper and more productive. Yannick had more sacks well, than Max Crosby. his money out, so. He ain't going to see make, that money. He's making the same amount, but it's just stretched over five years instead of but three. But he's going to see that money? Well, it's guaranteed, yeah. It's not a big guarantee. Like, he makes, like, $2 million in 27. But you about still. Devontae or Chandler? Chandler. Yannick was cheaper, younger. All right. Last one, Deion Sanders chastised players who do not want to partake in fight during, during camp. Fair or fade? This is a fade, bro, because he was saying the opposite at Jackson State. He said the total opposite at Jackson State. Cats are fighting. He made everybody run. He was in people's asses. So now you don't want fighting because, you know. No, he does want fighting. No, but I'm saying he he was yeah, yeah, yeah. different at Jackson State. And one dude got thrown out of practice, I remember. I mean, I think in general, we talked about it with fucking Cam and Max Crosby, but it's like these training camp fights are getting a little bit out of hand. Like In college, you expect it, though. I get it. It's It's part of the environment. It happens. But at this point, it's just becoming theater, especially when it's in front of the fans and in front of the media. Like, bro, none of these dudes are really trying to fight. Until someone takes their helmet off and goes fucking Miles Garrett, like, you ain't really trying to see these hands, bro. Let's be honest, though. Like, when people take their helmets off and square up one-on-one, 
And guess what? Charles Andrew and there's Johnson. no fans, and there's no team, and there's no media around. Guess what's going to happen? Both teams are going to circle up and be like, all right, let's handle this. Until the coaches come and break it up and like, oh, y'all millionaires, chill out. But I'm saying, if they were playing... The perfect time to what? fight would have been during the COVID season when nobody could be in the stadiums. Exactly. And nobody's really fighting like that. Exactly. Trash. So let's all chill it out, man. All I'm saying is... It's cool for a social media clip, and I think that's really that clip what it was comes bo- That clip was bogus, though. That's what I think it really was. Because it was a fucking like, six-foot-eight tackle... Him it up a corner, bro. You tried to get him to the ground and you couldn't. So already, it's hard for me to respect you. I was like, okay, TC, you gonna come in there and treat every treat you like they they have a Georgia flashbacks is what I'm saying. Like well, he, they're gonna Georgia you. They're gonna want to Georgia you because <laughs> they're gonna be like, how dare they do that to us? They beat us sixty five to seven, and then they took their foot off our neck, and we're still scoring touchdowns, like. When I said on Twitter and Keith Marshall was like, yeah, you're right. Because I was like, it should have been 86 to 7. They should have scored three more touchdowns. But they literally milked the clock out. That's the crazy part. It could have easily been 80. It could have been 90 to 7, bro. They could have put, I think they could have put up 100 points on TCU that night. If they were really like. And that TCU team has NFL players, too. Had NFL players. Yep. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Colorado, it'll be interesting to see what Colorado does this year. Because if Colorado gets boat raced and it could start off one and five, this shit could go very badly. All right, rants. Somehow we still had an hour and 30 minute show. Yeah, it's kind of trippy. I don't know if this is really a rant or a social observation. The people who come to, like, the forum area and all that for concerts really feel like y'all need to just understand something. Rather not switch. <sighs> that, that shit that Swifties got to the shit that Swifties were doing. Swifties came out there. It was peaceful. It was nice. They were running roughshod over SoFi. So much so they were backed up into the the forum parking lot. Wasn't nobody really having that same smoke or energy for the Drake concert. Let's just be honest. That shit came and went, and I did not care. Wasn't even mad that I didn't win free tickets to it. It's to the point where, like, the shit is mid. That whole shit with that Bobby girl who's clearly an industry plant. And I think she has, she's not with CAA, but she's with, I think she might be with, she, she's with somebody, some major agency. And all these like clout chasing podcasters. I think the chick from Call Me Daddy. A bunch of like white podcasters like with a certain agency. And they're all clicked up so you see their content in certain places that you didn't ask for it. Um, like Ole Miss football content. Pete, you gotta stop interrupting me because we all know you're an Ole Miss football fan. You definitely are, and you love Lane Kiffin. You can stop pretending like you don't, but you do. Anyway, so this public service announcement to all y'all: act accordingly on Prairie, please. This shit ain't sweet. I don't know who told y'all shit is sweet, even in the daytime, but you still in Lingwood. And in case you haven't noticed, across the street from the forum is a big ass cemetery. Manchester down the street. Uh blocks over. You're at the hospital, Cinnanella, which doesn't have the greatest track record. You might want to understand the terrain of being off prairie. Harbor Vita, whether it's Century. You need to, like, stop acting like a fucking tourist. It's not cute. Because the first thing you're going to do, if somebody hems you up, oh, my God, it's a ghetto, dangerous, unsafe area. Somehow blame black people and Latinos or whoever, but mainly black people because for some reason that's the first group that gets blamed in Inglewood. 
Um, hey, you got some goddamn sense, please, in terms of knowing where you're at. Don't just be having your wa- walking with your wallet out and shit and your, your money out and your phone out and not having your head on the swivel because there's too many local people who are trying to save you from getting your life taken because you looking like food out here and you think shit ain't sweet when there's cavities everywhere. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, man, for me, uh, another long week, but I'm getting through it. Um, Shout out to Applebee's for the endless wings, even though it took like 30 minutes in between, so we really couldn't be endless, but I digress. And you almost didn't make it. I had to bully you into getting that that fourth plate. Anyways, uh, outside of that, man, it's been a good week. Looking forward to the weekend. Get some work done. Get some projects done. Yeah, that's about it. Have a good week. Touchdowns of Tangents dot com. TDs underscore Tangents on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we'll be out at Charger practice next week, so check the social feeds. And uh, yeah, shout out to FBC Radio, X Squad Affiliates, your favorite podcast app. Anywhere else you can find this podcast. Peace. <laughs>